the chapter 3, uh, just the last few verses in that chapter, the baptism of Jesus, you would recognize these words, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I'm uh, well pleased. That is the uh, last words of the baptism. And now Jesus goes directly into the wilderness wandering. You know, we all go into our own sense of wilderness from time to time when we are going through difficult times. And my suspicion is that Jesus was going through a time of reflection deeply, trying to get the sense of, am I really to go there, this place? And so he, he suffers all that human beings do in their ways, and he suffers also the temptation uh, uh, from the tempter. Uh, the evil one, the devil, as is placed here. And we start with these words, uh, the first 11 verses of chapter 4, Matthew. And Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, and afterwards he was famished. The tempter came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, it is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against the stone. And Jesus said to him, Again it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. God, again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give you if you will fall down and worship me, the devil says. And Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan. For it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. And then the devil left him, <clears throat> and suddenly angels came and waited on him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You know, uh, I have been following uh, the, uh, the antics of uh, politicians and uh, uh, people of great power and wealth who were using that great power and wealth only for their own benefit and not for the good of the kingdom of God necessarily. And I, I witnessed the little ones in Matthew 24 being trampled by those who would use them up. My father used to say, even when I was a young person, and I would say, when I got old enough to kind of think through some of these things, I said, I start exclaiming over what a particular politician was doing that was just really tearing up the earth or, or messing with our people and leaving us in a bad way. And, and my dad would say, you know, God's still got control on this earth. So, yeah, we're suffering through some times, uh, but in the end, they do not get their way. I think about that in Scripture, too, because in Scripture, I think we're being reminded that all the time. And yet when we're in the midst of our own pain and trauma or in the midst of those who are taking us down a bad path, we're wringing our hands and saying, well, what are we going to do? So we live in an age where corporate interests many times want us to listen to their advertisements and, and uh, see the glitter in all that they're trying to see. Uh, they show us the, the beautiful families and, and tell you all about the, uh, the side effects of their product. And in all the meantime, everybody's smiling and the families are having a great time. We have to see beyond all of that and know where we are. So this being nothing new in all of history, Jesus is driven by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus fasted, and this was the time right after his baptism. And if you read a little farther in verse 12, you're going to see Jesus starts his ministry. So uh, he, he moves pretty quickly into all this as the story unfolds. Many in Jesus' day were suffering even greater travail and torment 
than, than anybody in this world is, I think, anywhere across this world because of what those the evil shepherds would do to their people. So anyway, Jesus was also bringing himself suffering through the same kinds of things other people did, where the tempter wants to divert their attention away from the power of God. And, and, and their only goal is for selfish means. If Jesus was to be the extraordinary force for good and the savior of all humankind, then Jesus, uh, it appears, needs to be able to know what it really feels like to be tempted and to be tested as he was in the wilderness. So the devil tempts, and out of temptation, God tests. Not just for Jesus, but for us as well. Will we allow ourselves to be dragged into what the world out there says is okay? It's okay to, to uh, live immorally as long as we give something back to the people of the universe just enough that they can have some crumbs. God's testing for faithfulness as children of God occurred from the earliest time when there was humanity on this earth. We read about, the, we read about the, the temptations and the testing in Genesis 3 this morning, and we recognized it was nothing new uh, as it goes through all of Scripture. Uh, the people in the wilderness wandering certainly had theirs. Uh, we find in Deuteronomy 8, 2, that God tested the Israelites in the wilderness, and, and these are the words. Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. We are given power as in God's power to do good in our lives. I'm, I'm really proud when I... I I see the words Matthew 25 uh, that the denomination has picked up and Debbie bless her heart has kept that in front of us and some of you who have been teaching Sunday school have done a great deal with that as well to really know that as you've done it to the least of these Jesus says you've done it to me in the prophets they, they said the they, uh, shepherds with evil intent trampling over the little ones was not very kosher at all. But we as a people in the church are able to go forth and bring God's spirit and God's goodness and God's mercy to the lives of people. Every Wednesday night during the winter time, there is grace in God's kingdom in our cornerstone room uh, across the way. <coughs> for those who have no home to be in. Did you see on the news this weekend that a family that was making $17 an hour could not qualify for an apartment in Seattle? How many other places are there that people cannot make a living enough on two McDonald's salaries or a Walmart salary to be able to feed their family very well? And maybe not well enough to have a home over them, and yet with all that churches and agencies are doing, there's still a pain and suffering that needs to be ended. So when God tests us as stewards for stewardship of our resources, which God has entrusted us, uh, we in the U.S. fall very closely to uh, being tempted to not do enough for what we can do. Um, you'll notice in some of the very poor nations, people that don't make as much in a week as uh, many of our people in this country make in an hour are still out helping their, their loved ones and their neighbors to get by. And uh, uh, Karen last week did a wonderful job. We need to keep this alive, Karen, because you brought us some real challenge on the park our sense of who we are and how we use our resources both humanly and our financial resources and, and um, there's just so much that we can do and I always say that that uh, 
We don't have to quit going to ball games. We don't have to quit going to different kinds of entertainment venues. But uh, I heard it cost six thousand dollars for a, a, a fairly high seat for the Super Bowl this year. What if a few people uh, who went there uh, just left off, got their, got their seat, but left off all the uh, frivolities beyond that? What would it have done for hunger in this country? We don't often think about that. I think I mentioned before the latte factor. Uh, this uh, David Bach wrote a book on growing more wealthy, and he he wrote this book called the latte factor. And he said, if you just left off one uh, $5 or $7 uh, Starbucks trip a week, what it would do for your income or what it could do for uh, helping people in the world, a lot to think about. Our life in family, community, and church is a boot camp where God is tested as to whether we can be entrusted with the power that God has given to us whether we can be entrusted with the resources that we have been given uh, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, financially, and otherwise. There are preachers on the air who will tell you that God gave them the message of what it was that all the people in that congregation needed to do. I am grateful in the Presbyterian Church that we have, we have the sense of uh, everybody has the opportunity to hear God's message and to exercise that message in, in a, a corporate, individual, and a corporate way where we can be truly hearing what God has to say to us. How we work individually with our stewardship and our discipleship, how we work together when we come together, and they call it synergy, I think it is, <clears throat> when, when, uh, when uh, all of us put together individually to be 100%, Synergy is when we all work together, we may be 110 or 150 percent because we do a lot better work by, by, by the group basis. <clears throat> a, high, a high value then for us being as we are is that we all have an opportunity to come up uh, in the sense of stewardship and evangelism, discipleship, and be the people that God's called us to be. <clears throat> Who would we be if we continually live in a community that, where we choose to live, being tested by God always, listening to what God is saying to us, and, and then go for what it is that God is saying? Who would we be if we pray for strength to live beyond the temptation to live just for ourselves, for being number one? Or saying that we are the smartest person in the whole world and nobody can teach us anything new. Uh, who would we be if we learned to be tested to become quickly uh, uh, to the thought that we are here to do our part to relieve misery in the world? That is a, those are big questions. Who, what would the world be like if we continue to give thought to uh, what our power is doing to others and are we addressing the needs of those who are in misery and injustices Jesus passed this test uh, always so to put summary to all of it Abraham passed the test when he was prepared to sacrifice Isaac his son but God saw that he was faithful and uh, blessed him Job passed when uh, Satan was uh, uh, you know, rambling around his home and community and in his life, and God blessed him. Now God blesses Jesus, who passed the test. There's hope for us here when we are faced with difficulty uh, that we are remembering that it is God to whom we call. We may put a great deal of confidence in our leaders and elders and and, and pastors and presidents and congress people and council people and judges and so forth but ultimately the test is how we turn to god at the close of this gospel we get the really coming together moment jesus will have the power that the tempter was attempting to give him if he would but follow him but the power will come not from the tempter but from the power of God. 
the route to our power is the same way. We will come, it will come from heaven, all the righteousness that comes from heaven uh, and not on earth, and we are who we are not to be misled by principles on earth, but to be led in spirit and truth by God. We come to the table today, and we are new people because we are living for Him in our faithfulness. Amen. As that we just now sang, we come at the Lord's invitation. You know, in the church we have uh, people preparing the communion, and the session has uh, uh, set the times and so forth. But it's God through Christ that sets the invitation. So uh, we are here by His grace and mercy. How will we offer grace and mercy to those that we meet this week? And we and they become new beings, servants in His kingdom. Let us go in the peace of Christ that loves us all, even if we're different, even if we are people that used to not be able to come through the doors and serve fully. We are the people of Christ. Come, serve, and go out to serve and be His, his disciples. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.